Namaste. Come on in. Happy Diwali. Let me show you what our decorations are all about. Just as in the West, we have flowers to greet visitors. In India, we have what we call torans, and they are made of flowers. Very often, they are fresh flowers, but sometimes we have fake flowers. Some of the torans are made out of um, cloth and silk. And something else here that we have is rangoli. A rangoli is like a welcome greeting. Again, it's a beautiful form of sand art, different colors. And the symbol that you see there is the swastik. It's a very, very sacred and important symbol for Hindus. It represents the cycle of life, that energy never dies. Here on the table, you see lots of lights, what we call diva, and that's how we get the word Diwali. It's two Sanskrit words, which mean a row of lights. And I shall explain that to you later. We have sweets here, lots of goodies. Um, now, let me explain the origins of Diwali. There are three different significant um, stories that are associated with Diwali. Uh, sit down there and talk to you. Um, first of all, Diwali is Thanksgiving. Ancient Indian civilization was based on agriculture. The uh, people's lives were dependent on agriculture. The economy was dependent on agriculture. So naturally, just as in many parts of the world, the harvest is a time of festivity and, of course, thanksgiving, celebration. Um, Hindus thank Lakshmi, who is a principle of abundance, the goddess of plenty, for uh, giving sufficient sunshine and water and rain and uh, nutrition in the soil. So this was really what it was originally. Then there's another story that's associated with um, this uh, Diwali, and that is the story of Lakshmi bringing, uh, finding her way into your house. If you don't light a row of lamps, Lakshmi will not find her way into your home. But where does this come from? It's because when the harvest is ready, people are uh, happy and they anticipate uh, the, you know, the harvesting in the morning. They start at the crack of dawn, but all through the night they celebrate and they light a row of lamps in the farms and that will keep the pests and the birds away. Now if they don't light those rows of lamps, obviously the crop will be destroyed by the pests or the birds and naturally that abundance will not find its way into her home. Lakshmi will not find her way into the home and uh, there goes prosperity. So. That is the other story that's uh, related to Diwali. One more story that we hear of is that of Ram, who was an ancient prince who returned to Ayodhya after 14 years in exile. And um, he was supposed to be a very, very popular prince who came back to become the king. And during his rule, the kingdom was prosperous, people were content, there was happiness everywhere, and he was uh, considered to be um, an ideal human being. So this is the celebration, this celebration aspect of Diwali. Um, then there is reflection during Diwali because Diwali is a festival of lights and light represents knowledge. And what is this knowledge? It's the knowledge within, it's the light within us to help conquer the good over evil. So good actually, uh, I'm sorry, to help conquer the evil with good. And the light is the good within you. So you actually have the knowledge, the wisdom, to conquer all of the bad, the monsters, and those monsters, the darkness within, is what? It's none other than anger, jealousy, all of the evil feelings that we have within us. And so therefore, light is what represents that wisdom that knowledge. And I wish you all a very happy life.